Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. We're back everybody, this is Dave Vellante with Steve Chambers. Josh Kahn is here, he's the Senior Vice President of EMC Global Solutions. Josh, welcome back, good to see you again. Thanks, good to see you guys, thanks EMC for having World. me. EMC World, you know, just when I think you guys can't hit, you know, <laughs> new heights, we got the, 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 the roar this morning, the beast, Things yeah, the <laughs> always oh, good, uh, good fun in those a lot keynotes, of smoke. and um, <laughs> hopefully mirrors. some good news too. You know, I mean, some some exciting announcements today, and um, you know, hopefully people enjoyed it as well. Yeah, so you've got, I mean, you've you've got a relatively new role. There's right. a new organization, a lot of organizational changes. You know, kind of internal plumbing, I know, but maybe start with what you're doing these days and sure. what the solutions group is all about. Yeah, so I run I run the global solutions organization. So um, what we do is we take the products from the Federation and from EMC and we design customer outcomes and then we engineer those those outcomes to give our customers a, a jump start on getting the results they're looking for. One of the big changes was VCE is now part of EMC. You're part of Praveen's organization. That's right. So yeah. that's kind of cool. A lot of solutions around converged. Yeah, um, exactly. What's new there? So we took, um, w when when VCE came in, we took the global solutions organization that I ran, it's about 500 people, and put it into Praveen's organization because there's really a lot of synergy between um, the deployment of converged infrastructure and the deployment of the solutions on top of it. So so take the enterprise hybrid cloud. You know, the, the fastest way to deploy the enterprise hybrid cloud is on a vBlock. And you know, the enterprise hybrid cloud solution is basically a bunch of software we've written to predefine service levels and automate the provisioning and configuration of, of those services. So it gives IT organizations a way to, to have their own sort of internal Amazon-like cloud. You do it with the, the solution my team's built on top of a vBlock and you can get it into your environment in 28 days or less. I think, I think that's good, right? Because for the longest time, everyone's been having to handcraft hybrid clouds out of a collection of things. Yeah. And it, it sounds like your team's moving to almost like a skew for a hybrid cloud, right? You know, it's going to be a productized hybrid cloud because that's does exactly it have to be it. different every time? I don't really think so, right? You know, there's, there's going to be dials and it sound, is that the direction you go? Yeah, that's exactly the direction, anything, right? right? We, we want to make it as turnkey as we possibly can, yep. drop it in, it, it's up and running. Hey, you need more capacity, you know, add another one of these. Um, there's lots of things they've done in the in the VCE architecture to to allow more modular expansion of components. So you can drop in the first V block and get up and running in a hurry. If you need more file-based storage, you can actually put you know isol or, you know file-based storage independently without a lot of compute or with less compute right. under the same control. So it's not only quick to get up and running now. The the, the expansion is is much easier, and you still get that simplicity and the VCE experience over all of it. So what defines a solution inside yeah. of EMC? <laughs> so we really have, I would say we have two different kinds of solutions. Um, one that we do is a reference architecture. So that's where we're going to take a bunch of products, we're going to put them together, and we're going to document how you deploy them, how you configure them, you know, uh, performance criteria, sizing guides, and we're going to put that in some kind of a white paper and, and deliver it to, to customers and partners in the market. That's a reference architecture. There's other kinds where we're actually going to define the outcome and write software to, to create that outcome. And we call that an engineered solution. So, you know, solution is a, is a word that can mean a ton of different things. And I think it, a lot of times um, when solutions become in vogue, people stop using the word product and start using the word solution to mean the exact same thing. But we mean really two very specific things. You know, reference architectures to help you deploy and be sure that you're going to configure it right and then engineered solutions that'll give you 80% of the answer right out of the box. So when you look at the market opportunity in those two broad categories, how does it break down? Is it, is it a bigger market for reference architectures because you get, I guess in theory, more flexibility, you can kind of do more things with it, or is there a bigger market for the latter? Type of yeah, I, I think a lot of it, the, the way I look at this has much more to do with um, whether you're talking about kind of a discrete application or a fundamentally new architecture. So if you look at uh, a hybrid cloud, you know, that is a totally different way to deploy IT, to run IT, to operate IT. And so for that, you really do need, there, there were a lot of gaps. People were trying to build hybrid clouds, spending two years and millions of dollars not getting the answer. So we felt like if we wrote a little bit of code to fill in some of those gaps, we could really get that outcome. 
but there's other things that I would call a discrete application. So if you're going to deploy Exchange, for example, you know, you're, you're buying Exchange, you're going to buy the hardware, and you're going to just kind of deploy that. End user computing, actually, very similar, right? It doesn't take a totally new architecture. You need to buy the the, the BDI platform and some you know, compute and storage and get it deployed kind of on a standalone basis. So reference architectures are great for those really discrete transactions, discrete deployments, discrete use cases. Engineered solutions are great for the fundamentally new architectures. So how do you decide what to attack? I mean, everybody's got a limited budget. You've got a big organization, but not unlimited budget. So yeah. how do you figure out where to go first? So a lot of that has to do with the, the Federation Steering Committee, and it comes straight from the EMC squared strategy, to be honest. You know, I think there's a, a belief that we've had for a number of years that cloud and big data uh, and social and, and mobile are fundamentally changing the, the industry, and they're going to create winners and losers. And in the tech industry, we think that the two of the places we really need to invest are enabling our customers to build hybrid clouds uh, and enabling our customers to build data lakes because we think big data is another another big factor. So you know, it really comes, I guess I would say, from the market, but also from our top level EMC strategy on how we read the market and the things that we think are the most important for us to invest in. Is there a bit of a, a, bit of a risk in this as well though, because the more you do for customers, the more they rely on you. And that sounds like a great thing, but if you're shipping them a, a working hybrid cloud, then are they going to then ask you to run it for them? And then, you know, yeah. you kind of get pulled in more and more, right? Do you, do you see that? Yeah, we. so so I guess what I would say is, um, you know, I Kill just- Kill me with that problem. Sport, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sports <laughs> analogies are terrible, right? But I think I think we're kind of like a give me the ball company, right? Yeah. We, yeah. We, we, want, we want people to count on us. I mean, we're, we're powering, and have always been powering some of the most important applications in the world, and that's a position we want to be in. Um, but what I would say is, yeah, absolutely. Some customers look at this and they say, hey, give it to me, I'll deploy it, I'll run it, thank you. Yeah. Uh, others say, hey, um, could, could I'll buy the stuff and put it on my site. Do you have managed services that can come run it? Or maybe they have a partnership with someone else that they want to run it as a managed service. Um, and some people want to deploy it off-premise, um, you know, and, and have it managed as an outcome off-premise. And we're seeing all of those models um, we're working ourselves to provide more options and we're working with partners to provide more options. Let's we we about, really believe in choice. Let's talk about data lakes a little bit. Yeah. You brought that up. So we, when we look at the market, you see about 40 plus percent of the revenue, mm. the spend in, in big data, let's call it, is on services. And you say, wow, that can't be sustainable, right? That's, yeah. It's got to be yeah. a solutions guy's, you know, Greenfield. Yeah, it, right? it's it, it's exactly so right. So, talk about the solutions you're building around data, data lakes, what you're doing with Isilon, yep. what customers are doing with them. Love yeah, to learn more about that. You're exactly right about how this works, right? I mean, in, in the beginning, you get a new concept and you apply a lot of services yeah. to get the outcome, and then you say, oh, hey, 80% um, of our deployments have this common factor. Let's mm -hmm. engineer that, and, and that becomes the, the basis of the engineered solution. Clouds are way further along, right? We've been at it for much longer. Data lakes are much newer. So we launched our Federation Business Data Lake solution at the beginning of the year. Um, we are in directed access now. So we've got a handful, um, or actually a few handfuls of customers that we're working very closely with to make sure, as, as, you, as you say, we, we cut our teeth um, you know, in, in a way where we can really focus and make sure we, we, we can support them all the way through. And um, there's a few things, so in that case, we're taking EMC storage and we're taking the um, Pivotal, Pivotal Big Data Suite virtualized on VMware and Cloud Foundry to build the applications on top of this data lake. So that's the, the foundation of our data lake, those federation products. And then the engineered solutions work we're doing um, has three pieces. The first part is the platform manager. So that is a way to automatically deploy and configure the right analytics um, platform with the right storage and get that all set up your, your data lake instance. Later this year we'll add some um, data ingest capabilities and some uh, data indexing capabilities. Um, we'll also add a data governor which will um, enforce data data policies and make sure that you know people can only get access to the data that you want them to have access to. And we'll put a, an analytic a data and analytics catalog on top which is the self-service engine that uh, data scientists and analysts will be able to use to go get these environments themselves. So I wonder if I could ask you a question, maybe help us out a little bit. So we, in our business, we have you know infrastructure, cloud, which is kind of infrastructure, but it's more than infrastructure, and then sort of big data has largely been this island, you know, Hadoop sort of you know, off to the side. Do you see those worlds coming together? They're, they're, I mean, you guys started the cloud meets big data, but 
are they starting to come together? Are you building those data lakes on top of cloud, or are people saying, well, I kind of want them to stay separate? What, what are you seeing there? Yeah, so, so um, virtualization offers a lot to building a data lake today. Um, mm -hmm. it, th there's things that are very complicated in, in deploying a data lake that um, a mature virtualization platform like VMware has, has addressed, and so um, I think because yeah. it's resilient. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's resilient. It's got things like um, metering. It's got so things. Tons of services. Tons of services, so, yeah. monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very mature ecosystem for running just about any kind of workload. So today, a lot of the, the data lakes that we see are being deployed that way. They're being deployed um, in a virtualized environment. Our Federation Business Data Lake is deployed virtualized, not because we felt obliged to include everything in it, but because it uh -huh. really was becoming the best practice in terms of getting all the functionality that we needed. I do think over time um, you'll see the the data platforms. I mean, big, big data is an interesting space because, you know, open source is is a, is a big factor there, and um, you're seeing a lot of Cloud Foundry, for example, is a you know is is an open source project. Pivotal has Pivotal Cloud Foundry. There's a lot of investment going into maturing those platforms as well, and so I think it's going to be interesting to see um, how the the big data and the data lake space evolves as we sort of you know, continue to see the, the evolution of things like Cloud Foundry and the role that they play in data lakes. All right, Josh, we just got the break sign. I'm sorry I got to go, but uh, <laughs> I really appreciate you coming up. We were chit-chatting right, too much before you came on, but it was I good know. to catch up. Yeah, with it you. was, it was great. Thanks, thanks, thanks for much. having me, guys. Appreciate it. Cool. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. We're live from EMC World 2015. This is theCUBE, we'll right back. <laughs>